We want to determine if the given infinite series converges or diverges. We also want to state the test used. The first thing we should recognize about the given infinite series is that we have negative one raised to the power of n, which means this is an alternating series. But let's start by checking to see if the nth term approaches zero, which is the nth term divergent test. This test tells us that if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n doesn't equal zero, we can quickly conclude that the infinite series is divergent. And when considering an alternating series, a sub n is a non-alternating part, so for our infinite series, a sub n will be four divided by n. So we'll find the limit as n approaches infinity of four divided by n. Well, this limit is pretty straightforward. Notice how for this fraction, the numerator is a constant and the denominator would be approaching infinity. And therefore, this would be approaching zero and therefore this limit is equal to zero. So when this limit is equal to zero, the nth term divergent test doesn't tell us anything. If this doesn't equal zero, we can conclude that the series is divergent, but if it's equal to zero, we still don't know if it's convergent or divergent, which means we'll have to apply another test. So let's go ahead and say here that the nth term divergent test is inconclusive, which means we'll have to apply another test to determine whether this converges or diverges. And because we have an alternating series, the most obvious test will be the alternating series test, which we'll now apply. The alternating series test tells us an infinite alternating series converges if these two requirements are met. First, zero is less than a sub n plus one, less than or equal to a sub n, and the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals zero. Well, we saw from the nth term divergent test, we've already satisfied this requirement. So now we just need to make sure that this compound inequality is also true. Well, again, a sub n is equal to four divided by n, and therefore a sub n plus one is equal to four divided by n plus one. Well, first notice that n is always going to be positive, and therefore both fractions will always be greater than zero. So now we just need to make sure that a sub n plus one is always less than or equal to a sub n. Well, if we take a look at these two fractions, notice how the numerators are the same, are constant, but the denominators are different. This denominator is always going to be one larger than this denominator. When comparing two fractions, if the numerators are the same, the fraction with the larger denominator is always going to be less than the, the fraction with the smaller denominator. As an example, let's consider when n is, let's say, five. If n is equal to five, a sub n plus one would be four over six, or four six, and a sub n would just be four fifths. Well, four six is less than four fifths, and therefore this pattern will continue for every value of n. So a sub n plus one is always less than or equal to a sub n. So we've met the requirements for this test and therefore the alternating series converges. So by the alternating series test, since zero is less than a sub n plus one, which is four divided by n plus one, which is less than or equal to a sub n, which is four divided by n, and the limit, which we found when we applied the nth term divergent test, as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals zero, the original alternating series converges. However, we also need to check for a conditional or absolute convergence because we have an alternating series. To check for this, to check for this, if the infinite series of the absolute value of a sub n converges, then the original alternating series converges absolutely. If this series diverges, then we have conditional convergence. Remember, a sub n was equal to four divided by n, and since n starts at one, the absolute value of four divided by n would still just be four divided by n. If we want to determine if the infinite series where a sub n is four divided by n converges or diverges. To help us do this, we could factor out this four and write this as four 
times the infinite series, where a sub n is just one divided by n. Now the reason this would be helpful is that this infinite series here should remind us of the p-series test, where p is equal to positive one. So for a quick review, the p-series test tells us that this infinite series converges if p is greater than one, but diverges if p is greater than zero and less than or equal to one. And therefore this series will diverge by the p-series test with p equal to one, and therefore the original alternating series only converges conditionally. So we'll say since four times the infinite series, where a sub n is one divided by n to the first, diverges by the p-series test with p equal to one, the original alternating series converges conditionally, not absolutely. So it is important to remember that when we have an alternating series, we do have to check for conditional or absolute convergence. I hope you found this helpful.